coming into this game. Who is the best team in the NFC? It's hard to pick anyone other than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Most complete team is Tampa Bay. Can you believe what you're seeing? This is not the way the script was written. Seattle, who I think probably is the best team. It's the fourth takeaway they've got today. You just can't win that way. Probably those two teams, Seattle and the Bucs. Oh, my gosh. They threw you under the bus, guys. Oh, At least you still have your own home, Lowe's home studio. At least oh, you still have right that. here in this Lowe's home studio. All right, oh so God. that was then, and this is now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a redo on that one, Mike, because this week, I think that the oh, Saints funny, are the best team that's in the funny. NFC. When that's you watch funny. that game against the Bucks last week, I was saying to myself, I don't know if anybody could have beaten them yeah. in, in that, that given Sunday, right? That day. And and they look terrific on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, and really in the kicking game, too. And they got Michael Thomas back. He wasn't even utilized <laughs> all that much. But when you look at their schedule going forward, you know, Atlanta twice and Denver and, and, the, and the Eagles and Vikings, the only game they won't be favored is Kansas City. Right. They might be 7-1, and one, the back nine, okay? And so you're talking about another possible 13-3 and three season for the Saints, Mike. How about you? Yeah, Coach, and, 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 and I like the Saints, too, man. They've done some great things. And they're going to get better because they will work to, Mike, to get that win and working in Mike Thomas, I think, is big. <laughs> but, I, I, but I like the Packers, too, now. I, I like the Packers, and, and, and the Packers actually beat your Saints in week three. Coach, they beat the Saints in 37-30, which was a great game. I know people will say uh, the Saints didn't have Michael Thomas, and, and I'll give you that, but the Packers didn't have this guy that I talked to later. They didn't have Devontae Adams in that game, but what's interesting, too, it was a battle of those two great quarterbacks, and how close those two guys played. You know, Aaron Rodgers had 283 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions in that game. Drew Brees had 288 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions mm -hmm. in that game. Now, they're both We'll have their star receivers next time. But I like the Packers also. I will not fall for the banana in the tailpipe, right? They set you guys up. They're going to yeah. use that against yeah, you yeah, next week. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm going to say is will, what we've come to realize in, in the NFC is that it really depends on matchups, right? Yeah. We've seen Tampa Bay beat Green Bay. And then we've seen Green Bay beat New Orleans. And then we've seen New Orleans beat Tampa Bay. And so, so much when it comes to playoff time, we don't have one dominant NFC team. It's going to come down to who do you get matched up against? If it's a physical team, how do the Packers match up against a physical team? Saints may be the best team in terms of playing finesse or playing physical, but Tampa Bay, they can come out and out physical you. And we believe by the end of the year with all those weapons, that they'll be, they'll be able to out finesse you right. or attack you offensively as well. But <clears throat> right now, I mean, we saw it last week. Oh yeah, it's going to be this team and this team. Well, we have no idea with the NFC right now because anybody can get beat by yeah, anybody, yeah. especially at the top of the mix. That's can I just say. say this though? I think we missed something right quick. No, Kurt, that's pretty cool, Kurt. <laughs> Thank you for wearing your salute to service. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Ty and Hanky, man, that's beautiful right there, Kurt. That's a beautiful thing. Good that job. That's a beautiful thing, but right. I got to get that in. Let's, Let's go back to Rich, okay? Let's go to Rich. Yes, okay. I can't wait to see next week's uh, Kurt, home, uh, that's cool. home studio that's to see that's just that's how that's long you just were right there. Uh, this season, the Lowe's home team is going to bring 32 players from every team across the league together to support community building projects that highlight the cultural fabric of their respective hometowns. This week, Lowe's home team co-captain Christian McCaffrey, Lowe's and the Panthers announced plans for a new lounge at Veterans Bridge Home, which helps veterans around the Carolinas who are seeking housing, jobs and resources. The VBH lounge is expected to be complete by mid-January. Good stuff right there. Panthers getting ready to take on the Buccaneers today. Week two is when Christian McCaffrey hurt himself, came back last week, but he's not going to be in this week. Hurry up offense, however, will be installed when we come back. Lowe's Home Studio is brought to you by Lowe's. We put the home football on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. Yep, Kenny Galladay's out again, but Jerry Judy with his shoulder expected to go. He just had a dynamite game against Atlanta. Kay Adams is going to join us in a moment to discuss more sleepers this week. Debo Samuel and LaVisca Chenault, is, they're both out. Ian Rappaport, let's talk about who's coming back. What do you have for me? 
Nick Chubb, the bell cow running back for the Cleveland Browns and someone who emerged as one of the best runners in the NFL before he sprained his MCL, is going to be back on the field today for the Browns, going to get the bulk of the carries and resume his status as their bell cow, Kareem Hunt, expected to come off the bench and spell him. My understanding, Rich, is Nick Chubb will great in practice. Of course, he has been ahead of schedule with his injury. All systems go for Cleveland. Meanwhile, another big-time running back that is coming back after missing a couple games this time with a high ankle sprain Kenyon Drake who had been the starter for the Arizona Cardinals I am told he is expected to play today they're going to watch him in warm-ups see how he is just to determine how significant of a role but he should end up splitting carries today in Arizona all right Ian stay right there we've got more uh, show obviously three plus hours to go but it's our first time we say good morning to Kay Adams and talk some sleepers for week 10 fantasy wise who do you have for us Kay yeah, a lot of stud running backs on bye weeks this week, Rich. So let's start with J.D. McKissick. We know Alex Smith likes to check down to his running back, and he did last week 14 targets for McKissick. That's crazy. No one gives up more fantasy points to RBs than the Lions. That's the matchup for today. They coughed up eight touchdowns to the position over the last three weeks, including three receiving scores. McKissick's involved in the passing game. Antonio Gibson has a role here. But I like McKissick if you can't play guys like Todd Gurley, Alaire, or Zeke all on bye. At wide receiver, do not sleep on John Brown. He gets to face the team that drafted him in the desert in what should be a really high-scoring affair. We told you here on Game Day Morning to play him last week. He racked up eight catches for 99 yards. If Patrick Peterson's busy hanging out with Stephon Diggs all day, and I think he will, I like Brown's chances to put up some numbers. Get excited to fire him up and Josh Allen here in Week 10. And I'll give you another running back since all those studs are on a bye this week. Over the last three weeks, Leonard Fournette has outplayed, outproduced, and outsnapped Ronald Jones. Lenny, as I like to call him affectionately, he put up 100 rushing yards and his only two touchdowns of the entire season in their first matchup against the Panthers. That was back in week two. I just think, Rich, Brady wants to bounce back. He's going to do it as only he can. It is hard for me to see Leonard Fournette staying out of the end zone in this one. I hate chasing touchdowns, but here we are. Those are three sleepers right there let's stack them up now you're stacking who in your daily lineup today it's wild to think that 10 weeks ago mooch was fake drinking uh, syrup <laughs> out of a bottle We're, here we are in week 10 uh here's the deal a lot of people are going to go for green bay a one-sided stack play aaron jones play Devonte adams that's great against the jags a lot of people are liking the bills and the cards i'm going to look though at the seahawks and the rams yes seahawks i'm sorry until you prove me otherwise i'm going to keep exploiting you in daily fantasy how about jared goff he has a breakout spot coming today he's coming off a bye week he's rested they're going to scheme this up and he's a way better value than Russell Wilson on the other side. Cooper Cup saw 21 targets before that bye against Miami in Miami. I think you zig and run it back with Tyler Lockett too while everybody else zags and goes with the flashy guy in DK Metcalf. All right. Thanks very much, Kay. We'll uh, see you back later on uh, in the show with uh, Fantasy Plays of the Day. That's Kay Adams right here on NFL Game Day Morning with her expert fantasy Thanks, advice. Speaking of fantasy, one day, Tom Pelissero will have an assignment in Miami. Today is not that day. It is not that day. Devontae Adams will go one-on-one -on -one with Michael Irvin, but once again, we join Tom Pelissero in the inclement Midwest weather. Tom? Well, Rich, injuries to Devontae Adams and others aside, the only major blip for this Packers offense this season came four weeks ago in a blowout loss to Tampa Bay. Jaguars linebacker Joe Schobert, a Wisconsin native, told me players really dug into that Tampa tape this week, and they want to replicate what the Bucks did. They're going to use some simulated pressures, some real pressures. They want to get in Aaron Rodgers' face and force him to make some quick decisions. Now, we'll see how much the Packers actually have Rodgers dropping back and throwing downfield today. The rain has already let up quite a bit here, but also could get some snow flurries and wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour. Rich? Okay, thanks very much, Tom. So the NFC playoff picture, you've got the Saints atop the entire conference for the moment, and the Bucks currently lead the three-team wild card um, Rondelay, and you know, it says in the hunt here. I don't understand why everybody in our business has to term this in the hunt, at least on my show. We call it sniffing it. The it being the playoffs. Right now, the Bears and the Niners are sniffing. I'm saying. Let's talk about it a little bit coming into this game.
Thank you.